Right, next stage is we made a piece of plywood to fit in the recess where the number plate goes. So that will fit flush against there. We've had to sand it down to be quite thin. We're going to glue this to here. We've sanded this down uh, with 60 grit. Glue that to that. And then we can put some filler over the top. This is the epoxy we're using. Just mixed it. And then applying it. It's been epoxied and clamped down, so it's just got to dry. I'll leave it overnight and come back to it tomorrow. Sanded this bottom edge so it's a bit more flush with the curve. Uh, next stage is we're going to do the edges with some filler, just mixing it up. Then we're going to go around these edges here, fill in the gaps first, all the way around. Right, so the filler has gone off. Uh, there are still some small imperfections. This is only the first layer. So we're going to have to sand sand a little bit here and then put the next layer on. All right, so it's just been lightly sanded with 120. Just gone over the majority and then the little bumps and bits that were sticking out. There's a little bit there that was smoothed. Try to smooth it out as much as possible. Right, so that's the second layer applied. I'm still new to this. Still learning the technique. Obviously you can see it's still quite patchy from where I've applied it. Try to feel more in this top edge. So we'll slowly raise the layer up with layers of filler. And then eventually once we sand everything down it will be flush. But As you can see there's still some low points that are sitting. Right, so the third layer has now been applied. Filled all the low spots. Just gotta let this dry. And then come back to it in the morning. But we're getting closer to it being fully smoothed. So that's looking good. Right, so it's just been sanded and cleaned with alcohol. There's still a few tiny little high spots. A few little lines, but they're less less ridges, there's a few little spots but now it's just sort of fine tuning the small areas that need that need it really instead of putting it over the entire bit we've just focused on little areas that are a little bit low in particular it was this end this end was coming down quite a lot so we filled in this gap and then there was a, like a an indent here that we filled as I say it's all in the preparation because it has to be as perfect as possible really because once you prime it and then paint it you'll see all any imperfections you will see underneath the paint so get it right now and then the end result will look much better we've sanded this bit a bit down just because this was a little bit lower than that and um, this bottom edge is now pretty much done nice and flush all the way along there's a small little hole there to fill in slightly and then another little bit there in that line and then a little bit there just a few little tiny bits and then that will be it pretty much again but just small little patches little edge there little lines here and then just try to scrape off as much as possible um, and a little bit there as well but yeah all right so sanded down the bumper again uh, then we've used 600 on the block and then 1200 that's a lot smoother finish and then dad's helped make this little template that was used and we just got to use some primer filler next to fill in all the little indentations and small imperfections but yeah let's get in there
and you can see in the light all the little lines and imperfections that we've got to get rid of. Okay. Right, so the next step for the bumper. Nearing completion now, what we've done is we've just put a very light mist of black paint over the top and then we're going to sand this away with a block. So the idea being that if there's any black spots left, they will be the low spots on the bumper. So we will see, it just helps us to see where the low spots are and where the black paint remains. Right, so we've just gone over it with the 600 a few times with the block. And as you can see, the black paint, if we can see some low spots here, particularly on this edge, you can see the edge um, where we filled it in with the wood and then there's a slight, slight ridge here, more towards the bottom. This bit's reasonably smooth, but there's a, like a ridge where it drops down lower here. You can see here where the black paint sits. And also along here, it just stands out more as black. Little ridges there, a little bit there. And then again, there's a little bit of a line here. This side is actually okay. This feels reasonably smooth. Small ridge here, but it's more so on this side. This drops down quite a lot. You can just feel it where this is higher and then it goes low and then flattens out again. All right, so after the filler, we've just sanded down, just using the 600 grit. And then we're just going over as much as we can, using our hands and sort of feeling where the high bit's here, a little bit here. This is now raised up a bit more. These middle bits have been flattened out quite nicely. And then these bits are still quite high. The filler can get a little bit crumbly, but overall not too bad. It smooths out quite well. And this bit, is nearly there, still a little bit high. Yeah, essentially we're just getting our sandpaper and just going over there. Just using our hands, we did well as using the block as well for the for the straight lines and sort of longer strokes, but I like using my hand on these bits that are just slightly higher. Just slowly working away. And then we, we're sort of hoovering it after a little bit, clean it up have another feel, see what it feels like and just slowly do it step by step. I don't want to take too much off and then it'd be too low back to how it was. So just doing it in very small stages. I just spent a good couple of hours going through lots of 600 grit and I've got to a stage where I'm really happy with it. So before we added the filler, this was quite high and this was quite low. We've smoothed everything out, mostly by hand. And yeah, 600 grit worked really nicely. This is super smooth now, nice and flat all the way along and gone into some of the actual bumper on the sides as well, which were some of the high points. And obviously this is now exposed, but we're going to be primering the whole thing anyway. So it'll all be one uniform color before painting and all the preparation. But in terms of sanding and having a nice flat smooth surface i'm really really happy with this so we're ready to put um, the primer filler on now so what we've done as well just to prep everything covered up most of the bumper that we don't really need extra spray um, wiped it down with alcohol and then we've got the primer filler we're going to be putting on just giving that a good shake um, warmed it up a little bit with the hair dryer so it's up to sort of room temperature because it's quite cold um, and that's it really and then we've got the mask mask to wear as well just to protect ourselves and our lungs so that's good <laughs> right, so the cup bumper is coming along well uh, the next stage I'm thinking is with regards to the number plate because with it smoothed currently I didn't want to secure the plate by drilling into it or doing that after all the work so the best solution that I've found um, is to use magnets uh, there's a good company called Magna Plates, uh, which I've got a kit from, a multi-kit, that we're going to be putting on the bumper. So the number plates will be able to just be taken on and off with magnets for photos and whatnot. So we've got magnets here that are going to be attached to the number plate, and then magnets on the back, which are going to go onto the back of the bumper that we're going to install. So the kit they provide gives you everything you need. I've even got instructions, and they've got a good... Uh, video on YouTube as how to install them as well. So the magnets for the back of the bumper, magnets for the plate, and then the plast stickers that are used with those magnets for the back of the bumper. The only other thing you'll need is something to clean 
the back of the bumper when you install the magnets just so all the surfaces are clean and the magnets stick on well so just got some alcohol and a rag we're going to be using but now you might be wondering about the strength of the magnets as well but I'm these are ridiculously strong I'll show you a good example of using these see how much it repels it <laughs> it's crazy but yeah they'll have properly properly strong Right, so we've got it held on loosely at the moment, just with the magnets on the back. In between each um, little magnet is these little plastic rings just to protect the magnets, but you don't need those. So if we go around here, you can see the magnets on the back. That's two for each plate, essentially. And then we can move, move it around to fine-tune where we want it. Obviously, that's going to stick back on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can move the, move the number plate around and work out exactly where we want it. We're probably going to have it flush with the bottom of this, where we cut it so it looks quite nice. Because right, I'm a bit OCD, what I've done is just used a little bit of masking tape to mark just where the edges of the curves are on both sides. So you can see at the moment the number plate isn't exactly in the middle. So we move it, slight adjustment to the left and then we can make sure it's exactly in the middle of the bumper. The surface has been cleaned with alcohol, so the surface is all prepped, ready for the magnets to go on. That's just a case of removing the 3M adhesive tape, already loosened that, and then positioning the magnets. And you can sort of feel before you put it on where it locates, and then get a good firm push to keep it in place. And that's all of those done now with the number plate. And then we've just got to put these sticker plasters over the backs of the magnets and that's it really all right so that's all the stickers done on the back of the magnets so now we can show you a video of what it what the strength's like and how the number plate goes on and off all right so the strength of the magnets is actually quite good it pulls on the bumper quite a bit so you have to get a little bit of force to get it off and then back on so yeah that's it nice and easy Take your number plate off for pictures and then put it back on when you go to drive back on the road. So simple, nice and easy. Magnets are quite strong as well, so ain't gonna worry about it coming off on the road at high speed. 3D gel plates looking nice. Right guys, the time has finally come. The cut bumper is now finished, primed, and then just sanded it down a little bit just to match the same smoothness as the rest but yeah as you can see it filled in quite nicely right so the grills are now secure we'll go behind and show you how we've secured them exactly so these bits we actually put on first screws might be into that one and then the pack that I got with TPS comes with these little sort of spacers slash washers so you actually put them in with the screws to help hold the grill five screws all the way around and they just go in quite nicely this tab goes over under this bit and yeah it just sits there with that and then the same on this side five screws again I've put, I've put the grill inside this bit it's a little bit of a pain trying to bend it I had to heat it up with a hairdryer because I was it more risk of breaking it to try and get it to slot into into this plastic part but yeah and then these essentially go go into here and then the other side but yeah the tabs hold it on i haven't got anything to hold it on at the top which is slightly annoying i might do something in this top corner because there's a little bit of material the only problem is there's so thin material that i don't want to go through and then go through the wrap and then at the bottom could potentially use a couple of cable ties or something to go around the bottom but yeah from the front you can't see any gaps with the grill but I know a lot of people buy like the mesh off eBay um, just so they've got more material to work with but yeah this is the one that came with the bumper from CPS but yeah that is all the grills fitted bumper sliders are on and ready to go and then these bottom parts as well they go on onto there. So yeah. 
that's all the bottom grills for the cut bumper. It looks so much cleaner. And the magnetic number plates are brilliant. Uh, shout out to magnet plates. I've got lots of other videos in the pipeline, guides for modifications I've done, as well as the car being wrapped. So stay tuned for more content. I hope you found this guide helpful. If you did, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. All my car marks and updates are on my Instagram, which I'll link in the description. So until next time, peace.